Connor, you're involved in the commercial side of the engineering of this uh, amazing project. It's not cheap doing a thousand miles an hour, is it? No, no, s speed costs. So, yeah. Uh, absolutely, we've spent, uh, we've spent a huge chunk of our resources to get the car to its current stage of development and always mindful of what it's going to cost to build the car that we design as well. So a lot of thought's gone into the build processes and practices and the kinds of materials that we can use that will meet the challenge of a thousand miles an hour. And it's been, it's been a huge exercise and we've been working away in the background with key partners on our primary structure. Um, and we're now at the stage where primary structure's been undertaken. We're going to build on that and we've been working with those partners for just over a year now. And we're looking now at the other, some th circa 3,000 parts we have to get made. Um, some of them need detailed designing outside, some of them be detailed design inside. But those have to be made over the next 10 months to get the car on its wheels before next Christmas. I, I assume the engineering goalposts are moving all the time, which must mean the financial goal po goalposts are moving as well. Difficult to, 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 to budget this and stick to it, isn't it? But budgeting's very, very hard. We're very good at making the most value, creating the most value out of the funds that we have. And we've directed those funds in the right places to make sure that we can accelerate the design and make sure we have the resources available for the partners we have. But part of what we're doing now is trying to be as elastic as we can with that design phase. So as well as growing the team internally, and we've had new heads start just since Christmas, we're looking to expand to push some of the design packages out to technology companies in the UK to complete the detailed design, because these are mature schemes, and get the parts made. So it's always a challenge, and we're very flexible. We have to be elastic. Andy, what's sort of uh, the timeline on this now? When do you hope to, to actually get in a finished car and give it a go? Yeah, good question. We, we can answer that with a lot more confidence than 12, 12 months ago, because 12 months ago, we were still refining the aerodynamics and looking at the funding. Um, last year, two major things happened. First of all, we finished the aerodynamic design. We know exactly what shape the car down is to exactly where the nose is going to be relative to the ground. Also, we picked up Rolex as a main sponsor, so we've got a, a, a much more sound financial footing and exactly the shape we want to build. That will then take us the rest of this year to build it. Um, by early next year, it will be a car with switching things on and making them work. Um, by the middle of next year, we'll be driving it up and down a runway in the, uh, in the UK um, and actually testing it up to around 200 miles an hour, depending on exactly how big we can get the brakes in. It's stopping that's the problem. And straight from there, we'll fly straight out to uh, South Africa. Um, and I was actually out in South Africa in November last year looking at the, uh, the track work. They have cleared by hand 10 million square meters of track so far. That's a 500 meter wide track, 20 kilometers long. They now have to clear the safety zone either side in case the car gets offline of another uh, 12 million square meters. So our first world record is going to be the largest surface on earth cleared by hand. Oh, brilliant. Three, 300 locals in South Africa, and that's making a huge difference to their economy. It's also making a huge difference to the Northern Cape of South Africa in terms of, you know, this is their World Cup. This is a global event that millions, hundreds of millions of people are going to watch, and it's going to happen in the north of South Africa. It's a relatively poor area, and it makes a big difference to them and to their science and technology education program. So we're really excited. We've got the world's best racetrack, mostly finished now. We've now got to build the world's best car and get there. 2013, that'll be us. So do you need 20 kilometers to get up to speed and achieve the, is it still the measured mile at 1,000 miles an hour? How far do you need? No, we don't. What we need is 20 kilometers to get up to speed. We can do that actually in about seven, six or seven kilometers. Measured mile, another kilometer and a half. Slowing down is the tricky bit because, you know, as you're accelerating, more acceleration is always optional. You, I can always throttle back. Once we hit 1,000 miles an hour, slowing down in the distance remaining has just become compulsory. So we actually have to have enough distance, and it's going to take about 8K to slow the car down, plus a little bit of overrun to make sure I never have to test its cross-country capability. Uh, you've spent much of your career flying jet aircraft, of course. Is this effectively a jet aircraft that stays on the ground? In simple terms. In technology terms, yes, it is. It's very much a car. It derives its stability and its lateral grip from its wheels. So it is a car. It is a land speed record. But in terms of the speeds, you know, a fast car in this hall is 200 miles an hour. A fast car for us is 1,000 miles an hour, 25 times the aerodynamic load, 25 times the load through the suspension. The power here, a powerful car is 1,000 horsepower. For us, we have 133 thousand horsepower and we're using a formula one engine just to drive the rocket pump for the uh, for the rocket motor so 
it's a different league. It is aerospace power, speed, acceleration. You know, naught to 60 in 1.2 seconds is the sort of power we can develop. Um, you, don't, you don't use that on a racetrack. We need that kind of performance to get to 1,000 miles an hour. I'm exhausted just trying to absorb those numbers, frankly. There are more. And, of course, the interesting thing, when, when, you know, we're manufacturing uh, wheels that will do 10,000 revolutions a minute and pull 50,000 G at the rim. So it's a solid aluminium wheel. We've actually we've got the car and one of the wheels just about uh, 30 metres that way. So come on down and have a look. It's a, it's a big 90 kilogram disc which will cope with 1,000 miles an hour. Those are the sort of technical challenges that the, uh, the design team and the engineering team are now solving, and we're going to put it all together by the end of this year. Connor, have you found there's been a lot of goodwill? A lot of people want to be on board to fly the flag and, and showcase the sort of the, the, the British skill and, in, uh, and engineering in this project. Uh, absolutely. I mean, through the depths of the recession, really, we were we were overwhelmed with the support that we've had. I mean, ultimately, uh, for technology companies in the UK, you are what you do. And for open innovation and using a global stage to, to show what you do, Bloodhound's just the ultimate tool. And we've just, you know, we, w the goodwill that the project receives from UK companies has been amazing. You know, it really has. It continues to be so. We've just partnered up with... Um, the MIA, who are at the heart of what is a £10 billion a year industry, the, the motorsport industry, and their little black book of 9,000 UK technology companies is now open to us. And off the back of that, we have this design and make package now. We're not big enough to have a 40, 50 person purchasing team like you have at a Formula One team. There's myself and a couple of other people. So we're actually asking these companies to come to us. So we're going to advertise these packages. Some of them are design and make, some of them are make, and ask people to have a look, click, quote, we're going to ask them for a very competitive price. We're going to ask them for a very, very tight lead time. And we're going to get this thing on its wheels by Christmas. I think this show is a perfect manifestation of how good Britain is at this technology and the skills and the, and the, the adaptation of all these different projects. It's a great place to, to meet and greet, isn't it, and learn. That's amazing. On the way down, we stopped at um, Paul Drayson stand to look at that amazing green car. I mean, it really is. And they did that in 10 months. And we look, we're looking forward to our next... 10 months of challenge we have to get this car, all these components built. And we say, well, there you go. It's absolutely doable. And uh, we have the most amazing team. We've got the great supply chain in place. And we have, you know, circa 3,000 bits to detail, finish off, and get made. But we look at that car and we think, yeah, this is very doable. And we've got the amazing partners to get it done. Guys, it's a fantastic project. Uh, and we wish you well. It's great to hear about it. And hopefully in 12 months, you'll come back and you'll be that bit closer. Now, 12 months' time, we'll bring the car with us. Well done. Will it fit in here? Yeah, but we can't start yeah. it up. No, that would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Andy Green, Connor LeGroux, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you very much.